So today I'm going to discuss step counters and specifically how accurate they are. So I got my first step counter I think about two and a half years ago. It's this Fitbit Charge 2. And when I got it my goal was always to get 10,000 steps. But over time I've tried a few other ones and I've really started to doubt the accuracy of these different step counters. At the end of the day they could be as far as 5,000 steps off, about 50% of my steps. In this video I'm going to analyze the accuracy of several types of step counters and I'm going to look at what they do right, but I'm also going to look at what they do wrong. And to give you a little sneak preview, I've found that most step counters are pretty good at counting steps when they're supposed to count steps. But a few of them also count a lot of steps when they're not supposed to count steps. To see how well step counters perform, I'm going to be looking at two things. First, I'm going to see if they actually count steps when they're supposed to count steps, and if it's the right amount of steps. And second, I'm going to check if they count steps during any activities when they're not supposed to count steps, like cycling to work or being on a home trainer. I'll be looking at four different step counters. The first one is my original step counter, the Fitbit Charge 2. I also have the upgraded version, the Fitbit Charge 3. I bought this budget step counter, the Xiaomi Mi Band 3. And finally, I have this Spire Stone. And this you actually wear on the waistband of your pants instead of the other ones that you wear on your wrist. So the first thing I did was to check if these step counters get the correct amount of steps when going for a walk. So I took a walk of exactly 10,000 steps and I tracked each step by hand using one of these tally counters. And I was actually pleasantly surprised by the results. So when I checked afterwards, I saw that the Fitbit Charge 3 actually recorded the most steps, with exactly 10,313 steps. It was closely followed by the Fitbit Charge 2, with 10,120 steps. The Mi Band, the cheap one, recorded 10,050 steps, so it was very close. And the only counter that got fewer than 10,000 steps was the Spire Stone, at 9,747 steps. But it does mean that all step counters were within 350 steps of the actual amount, which is pretty good. So all of these step counters are pretty good at counting steps when they're supposed to. So at the end of a walk you're getting a pretty decent estimate of the number of steps you took. But I was still noticing big discrepancies between the different counters at the end of the day. So something was going wrong there. And I figured that the most likely reason is that some of them are counting steps when they're not supposed to. And this is probably when you're doing some kind of activity that is not walking, but still you're moving around, and they're counting steps. So to check that, for the last year and a half, while I've been tracking my steps, I've also been tracking my activities. And specifically, I've tracked my sports activities, and for me that means weightlifting and being on a home trainer. And I've been tracking my traveling, so that means traveling on a bike, on a bus, a car and a train. And all of these are supposed to give about zero steps. So for each of these activities, I can then check how many steps I actually got. But of course, I ended up with a whole lot of data. Let me show you. So I used this app called Arc app on my iPhone to track my traveling and location. And at the end of the day, I would always put down what kind of activity it was and where I'd been. And you end up with a bunch of files like these here for each day. And they look something like this, where you end up with what is called a JSON file. Where, for instance, here you can see I was cycling <coughs> on the 31st of October at 10:05 uh, in the in the evening, and well, there's a whole different bunch of files here. Um, and for instance, for uh, my home trainer, I'd end up with uh, a whole bunch of files like this. Uh, for instance, here for indoor cycling, which is in the in the same JSON format, um, where you can also see a start time and a time zone. And of course I'd also have different files for weightlifting which were on my Fitbit. So of course I cannot analyze this all by hand. So I wrote some computer code where you see an example of that here to actually process all this data and in the end make some uh, nice graphs of it that we can actually understand. But let's look at the results. And as a control I actually checked first how many steps per minute I got while walking. Uh, and I plotted that in a graph and I want to explain to you what you're going to see. So this is still an empty graph uh, and I'm going to plot how many steps per minute I got and in this case it's for walking. So walking should give you some steps per minute. 
And what I actually did is each time I went for a walk over the last year and a half, that was at least five minutes, I calculated the average steps per minute and then I create what is called a histogram. So let's say I go for one walk and it's about 100 steps per minute. So you get, you get a small bump here. Then the next time maybe I took about 80 steps per minute. So you get a small bump here. The time after that I took about 120 steps per minute. And maybe the next two times again I walked at about 100 steps per minute. So you get sort of a graph like this. Now this was an example of only five walks. But over the time span of a year and a half of course I took many more walks. So if you actually calculate all the results for the four trackers, you get a result like this. Where here you see the four different trackers, so the Fitbit Charge 3, the Fitbit Charge 2, the Xiaomi Mi Band and the Spire Stone. And as I said, for walking you should get about a 50 to 100 steps per minute, uh, which is roughly this range here. And as you can see, most of these trackers roughly fall into that area of about 50 to 100 steps per minute. Maybe sometimes I was walking a bit more slowly, but they're all pretty good. And you might notice that there's less data here for the Xiaomi Mi Band, and that's because this one I only wore for about a month. Uh, whereas the other ones I really wear for the whole time period. But you can see all of them are pretty consistent and my code seems to work. They're all getting about 50 to 100 steps per minute. Now this basically confirms what we saw before, that when you actually go for a walk, all of them are pretty accurate at counting the number of steps. What we actually wanted to check is if we also get steps for activities that shouldn't give steps. Now these results I've plotted here. So on the left here you see the same result as we just saw for walking. And then here you see the other activities, so cycling, training on a home trainer, weightlifting, riding in a car, bus and train. Now let's first focus on this part on the right here, so the weightlifting, car, bus and train. So most of the time that I'm weightlifting, driving in a car, a bus or a train, indeed I'm getting about zero steps per minute, which is good because I'm not actually walking. But what actually caught my eye was that for both cycling and the home trainer, uh, both the Fitbit Charge 3 and Charge 2 give me a lot of steps and especially here for the Fitbit Charge 3 you can see that when I'm on my home trainer I'm on average getting more steps per minute than when I'm actually walking. When I was cycling for the Fitbit Charge 3 and Charge 2 I'm actually getting a lot of steps. I'm getting about the same amount of steps as I'm getting walking. So somehow the Fitbit Charge 3 and Charge 2 are seeing cycling, the movement of cycling as something similar as walking. Now looking at the Xiaomi Mi Band and Spire Stone, we can see that they're pretty good at the cycling part. They give me about zero steps per minute. And the Xiaomi Mi Band is also pretty good on the home trainer, so I'm also getting about zero steps per minute. But the Spire Stone also gives me quite a lot of steps when I'm on the home trainer. So overall the best for this appears to be the Xiaomi Mi Band 3, which actually gives me decent number of steps when I'm walking, so a reasonable amount. But for all the other activities, so the cycling, home trainer, weightlifting, car, bus and train, it gives me about zero steps per minute. Next, I actually wanted to visualize what this accumulation of steps over a single day for all these trackers actually looks like. And that's what I've plotted here. So it's from midnight uh, one day to midnight the next day. And I have my four different trackers. So in black, the Fitbit Charge 3, in blue, the Fitbit Charge 2, in green, the Spire Stone, and in red, the Xiaomi Mi Band. And as you can see, they all start at zero steps at midnight, but then when I'm on my home trainer, you can see that the Fitbit Charge 3, Charge 2 and Spire Stone count some steps, whereas the Mi Band is quite a bit better, similar to what we saw before. Then here I actually got a brain scan and MRI, so all of them counted zero steps. And during the day, they counted some more steps. And in the evening, I was on my home trainer again. And again, you see the similar pattern, where the Xiaomi Mi Band is pretty good, gives me almost no steps but the Spire Stone, Fitbit Charge 2 and Charge 3 actually give me quite a few steps. So as you can see, at the end of the day, there's quite a big spread in the number of steps all of these trackers counted. So at the high end of the spectrum, we have the Fitbit Charge 3 with about 15,000 steps, whereas at the low end, we have the Xiaomi Mi Band 3, which only counted about 6,500 steps. And the Spire Stone and Charge 2 are in between. Now these trackers actually give you a notification when you reach 10,000 steps. And I'd already noticed a few times that I hit my step goal either while ironing or while folding my laundry. So I checked how many steps I actually got while doing that. Now I only did that one time. So I put the results in this Excel table. So on the left here you see the four devices that I use. So the Fitbit Charge 2, the Fitbit Charge 3, the Mi Band 3 and the Spire Stone. And here's the number of steps per minute for laundry and for ironing. Now again what you can see is that the Fitbit Charge 3 gives you the most steps per minute for both laundry and ironing, followed by the Fitbit Charge 2, 
and the Mi Band 3 and the Spire Stone do a lot better. So this replicates what we saw before, where this Fitbit Charge 3 gives the most false positive steps, followed by the Fitbit Charge 2. To summarize, most step counters overestimate the number of steps you get per day. Especially my two Fitbit devices, the Fitbit Charge 3 and Charge 2, vastly overestimate the number of steps per day. They count a lot of steps, especially when I'm on my home trainer or when I'm cycling. And surprisingly, the newer Fitbit, the Fitbit Charge 3, does worse than the Fitbit Charge 2, the device that came before it. The device I wear on my waistband, the Spire Stone, did pretty well, though it still counted some false positive steps. And the one that actually performed best was the Xiaomi Mi Band 3, which is a quite cheap device of about $20 that you can buy from China. Now given that both my Fitbits and the Xiaomi Mi Band 3 are worn on your wrists, and the Fitbit probably has superior hardware, I suspect it's a software problem rather than a hardware problem that causes Fitbits to count steps when they're not supposed to. So maybe Fitbit can come up with some kind of update to get rid of this problem. Now for some people this might actually not be a problem. If you want to use the steps from the Fitbit as some kind of tracking of your general activity level, then I guess that sort of works. But I would still prefer they wouldn't call it steps then, but just activity level. The final thing to take away from this video is, if you're in some kind of competition with your friends to get the most amount of steps per day, that really doesn't work if everybody uses a different device. Or if you're really keen on winning, just buy the Fitbit Charge 3 because it's bound to give you the most steps. Alright, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing.